<laughs> that everyone keeps on mistaking you with. <laughs> so we've got October Red Boxing here with Tom Dallas from Wasserman uh, HQ in London. Thanks for taking the time out to talk to us today, Tom. It's an absolute pleasure to speak with you. Thank you, you very much. You are the matchmaker for Wasserman. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into matchmaking. Uh, I've been matchmaking for just over five years now. Um, I've, I've just been a boxing nut my whole my whole life. I always wanted a career in boxing, but I can't box, so I had, I had to do something um, out, outside the ring. Um, so yeah, now I'm, I'm a boxing nut. So just working in the in the sport is fantastic. And how long have you been working in the sport? Um, so with Sauerland Brothers, about five years, and before that. I was working for a year or two up in Northeast Boxing um, on the small ball shows up there. Still professional, but working yeah with the small ball promoters. Um, and yeah, I pestered Nissa Sauerland for a job, and he, he caved in eventually. And that was yeah five years ago. And yeah, I've been working for him ever since. So for our viewers, then give us a little bit of an insight on what it takes to be a matchmaker because it's not an easy job, is it? No, no, no it's, it's 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 a stress. It's quite a stressful job at times because it's almost like you've got the career of these boxes in, in your hands it, one one bad move and I mean you hear it all, all, all the time it takes 20 fights to build a career but only one fight to end one so it can be a stressful job fight nights I'm always kind of biting my fingernails because <laughs> it, 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 there's always that chance in boxing so yeah fight nights usually quite a stressful one for me but um, no but we, we, we like to think we get it right um, pretty much all the time anyway so yeah so talk to me about getting it right what do you have to do as a matchmaker to ensure that those fighters are built correctly it, it's just knowing each fighter inside out individually you, you have to you have to know the fighters that you're working with and you, you have to you have to be in the gyms with them you've got to see them spar you've got to, you've got to really really know them inside out um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously, you need just a good knowledge of, of, of the, the technical side of boxing as well. Even though I'm not a boxer, I, I study I study boxing almost like a coach would. I'm I'm watching over old fights sometimes, watching them in slow motion to see tendencies and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, there's a lot of research and, and detail which goes into it. I know there's like a lot of matchmakers who will just. Pick a po pick a pick someone on on, on box rec because they they their record looks what they're after but they they haven't even even seen the fighter fight so you don't even know what you're getting sometimes so I, I'd never I'd never do that it's yeah a lot a lot of research goes into everything. Could you give us an example of um, matchmaking that you have done uh, whilst you've been under the Sauerland Brothers because obviously the Wasserman thing's new we're yeah, not going to talk about the new fights that we've got yeah. coming. But previous fights and, and which fighters you've actually matched made yeah. and how you've done that? Yeah, I said one of the proudest ones would be our Croatian heavyweight Filip Hergovic. He's he's only had twelve fights, but he's already in a final eliminator position with the IBF. So we've kind of moved him very. That's that's the thing because each boxer's an individual case. You move them at different paces. Hergovic was an Olympic bronze medalist, so he's had that amateur pedigree so you can move them at quite a rapid rate and after 12 fights he's already in a final eliminated position with the, the IBF so that's one that I'm quite proud of kind of matching him from debut and guiding him through the rankings um, but it's also just as fun working with a prospect who hasn't had that amateur pedigree because you have to go at a totally different pace with them sometimes they need 20 fights before you before the, before they're at that stage rather than Herkovic who's only had 12 so um, yeah, no, no, it, I, I really enjoy all aspects of it and, yeah, like I said, getting to know the individual fighter and knowing at what pace to, to guide them at. Absolutely. I like, I like the fact that you've highlighted that there's differences because matchmaking is something that I don't understand the science of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would have probably said, yes, it's box rec. Let's yeah. have a look at the records. Let's match those two yeah, together. No, but, but box rec is always a good start starting point. Starting point, yeah. yeah. You go on there and see... Who, who's there and then you check these names and then you do your research afterwards but I, I know so many people who don't bother with that second bit they'll, they'll see someone on box rec see their record oh perfect that's just the profile I'm after get them and then but and then they turn up and they're just not what they expected at all but uh, another thing because 
Yeah, well, especially like uh, we signed Matty Harris today, six foot eight, heavyweight, really looks the part. I don't want a, a journeyman to come in who's five foot five, and it, it will just look ridiculous on the on the scales, and it, it doesn't look good on on Matty when he's having to put his social media photos of of him and his opponent at the weigh in, and he's six foot eight and his opponent's five foot five. It, it, it you just know what's gonna, you just know what kind of reception that's gonna get. So. It's also looking at the aesthetics of the opponents as well and making sure they look good for TV, um, look good for your promotion and don't damage anyone's brand, really. There's so much behind it, really, that you don't really take that much notice of. But now you're saying that, we have seen yeah. boxers and there's like massive height difference. There's yeah. one that looks like they're in really good condition, yeah. another one that doesn't. And like you said, you can, you can almost predict yeah. what's going to happen. But say the flip side then, you know, like you said, you're quite methodical with your matchmaking, you're yeah. studious, you will study each opponent so they're matched properly. I mean, talk to us about what the consequences can be for the fighter. Say, for example, the new signing, you're bringing them in, yeah. you're using that height and that weight advantage, yeah. and you're possibly bringing in an unknown, yeah. um, somebody that, oh, they've got a record on box rec, but they're an unknown entity. And that could possibly cause an upset. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and I'm just always trying, try, try and avoid that. Really, um, I don't think I've had any situations where that's happened and it has gone totally wrong. There, there, there has been cases like on a, on someone's coming in on a pro debut, a bit unknown, and it's looked a little bit shaky. But you just learn from that, and just just know not to take that risk because yeah, I'll just like I. I, I even though I haven't had any major disasters, there's still been stuff where after the fight I've said I shouldn't have done that or I, I wouldn't have done that, next time I won't do that. So yeah, it's just, yeah, you, there's no, you never stop, you never stop learning in, in boxing, no, in, no matter what role you are, whether you're a boxer, trainer, matchmaker, promoter, cut man, you, you, you learn from your experiences every time. So what would you do if there's like a possible fighter I mean, because obviously we can look at YouTube, we can look yeah. at fighters on YouTube and yeah. have a look. Okay, yeah, I think they'd match. I've watched that one. There's no YouTube footage of the possible opponents. Then I'd avoid. I, 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 I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't get. I, I wouldn't get an opponent where I know for a, there's zero footage out there, and I haven't got a clue. I'd, uh, there's not. Yeah, I just wouldn't do it. it it's you just don't. Know, how, how can you? It's, you're doing it blind, the, aren't you? You've got someone's career in your hands, you, you, and, and us as promoters, we're investing money into that one's career. You can't just pick, pick something blind and, and, and not know what you're paying for. It's, it, I just wouldn't, wouldn't do that. But it, for most boxers, you can find something, because even if it's a small hall show in Bulgaria, most of their fights are still on some <laughs> dodgy website somewhere, which you can find. So, so yeah, I just. There's enough opponents out there that I don't need to find someone who's there's no footage of. And Wasserman have signed a couple of new heavyweights, Jose yeah. Stewart being one of them. Yeah. And obviously we've got Matty Harris, which is a new signing to the company as well. Yeah. In relation to matchmaking them because they're both debutants, yeah. what are you looking for in their opponents? Yeah, well, to start with, I imagine both of them will move at quite a similar, similar pace, so it'll be very interesting to see how their careers develop next to each other. Um, I guess it's almost a bit of more pressure on both of their shoulders because there's someone who's got the exact same profile who they're getting compared against. So you, you'll see that they're certainly for the start they'll be they'll be guided in a very similar way to each other. And you never know in boxing one might progress quicker than the other and their paths change a little bit. Um, but but yes, it's certainly for their early fights, both of them. Uh, Def just, just wanted to get rounds in the bank and as many different styles as they could possibly face. I mean, of, of, of course, the, the knockouts are great for TV and social media, but more importantly than that is the, the rounds and experience. So we'll always look to get durable opponents who, who aren't falling over after the first punch they get. I, I don't, don't want any of that. Um, I, still hope they, I still hope they get some nice knockouts because if they're knocking out Durable opponents who don't normally get knocked out. That's showing. That's showing that they've really got something. So, of course, I'd still like to see them get some knockouts against these guys. But yeah, it's definitely key to get them durable opponents who can who can teach them something in the ring. It's so true because us as fight fans, we watch it and we look for those knockouts. 
and sometimes we're watching the debutants and it's sort of like they haven't knocked their opponent out yeah. and it's almost like we've sort of like switched from the art of boxing like you said getting yeah. those rounds in building the fighters to almost wanting to see that knockout all the time yeah no, no, and some of these knockouts that you see that they're, they're not proper knockouts it's just that they're just such overmatched fights and the opponent just can't take anymore and he'll take a knee and, and that, they're, they're the most embarrassing fights you can possibly get out there no one gains from it um, it looks a bit crap on TV no, no, no one likes to see it so yeah no, just try and avoid those at all costs really absolutely so moving from Silent to Wasserman yeah. obviously you know it's all yeah. new how are you finding it the transition between the two companies and moving forward then an opportunity it's global you're yeah. going everywhere are you going to be traveling to look at potential sparring partners as part of the matchmaking process yeah well, well I mean, we'll, at Team Sourland, we've always been an international company. Anyway, we're, we've we work in so many different markets. Um, so yeah, I've always, always always had an international focus. Anyway, I mean, I think at the moment we have boxers from probably over ten countries around the world. Anyway, so always travelling. Always, obviously, it's harder at the moment. But pre-COVID, I was travelling maybe 25, 30 weekends of the of, of the year for all our events or training camps, um, meetings. So, 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 so yeah, well, I'm sure once the world gets back on track, I'll be, I'll be doing that again. Um, and yeah, for, 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 for like, like I said, with, with Matty and Jose, it would be great to send them to, to Croatia or Miami and do some sparring with Filip Hergovic, who I mentioned earlier, that would be great experience for them and great work for Hergovic as well. And I'd, I'd love to, to travel and go see that. Yeah, mentioning Hergovic, he seems to be a bit of a kryptonite um, heavyweight boxer. People have sort of like avoiding him like the plague. For one. It, that's how it looks. Yeah. I can't say that because I don't know the ins and outs of it, but people just seem to be avoiding him. Yeah. I know that he was due to fight Michael Hunter. Yeah. Not sure what happened there. Tell us a little bit about that if you can. On, I don't know, it just, it just seems to be avoided. Yeah, I, I just don't think anyone wants to, wants to fight him. Um, it, it, it's difficult in, in his situation because he's only had 12 fights um, and I think every, anyone even if it was a Joshua Fury anyone knows that it's a horrible fight against Sergovic just because he's, he's an animal he's so, he's so, he's so good and I, don't, I just think people know that they're likely going to lose to him so that, that, do they want to risk their record losing to a 12 and 0 heavyweight I don't know we thought it would be easier now that he's got his ranking and it's a final eliminator on the line. I mean, whoever steps in to fight Hergovic, if they do win, they're mandatory for, 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 for AJ's IBF belt. I mean, it's a huge prize on the table. So it is a little bit confusing as to why people don't don't want to fight him. It's, but um, uh, I guess they just don't fancy it. He, 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 is, an, he is an animal. So um, I guess I, I can't blame him because I certainly wouldn't step in the ring in the ring with him um, so I guess I guess they're the same yeah he, I do like watching him he's, he's got a nice love he's a boxer he's a true boxer and I do yeah. like the boxing fights I'm not one of these yeah. that's you know it's super excited about knockouts I like to see the skills yeah. of the boxer and he's definitely one that I like to Absolutely. watch do you know when we can expect to see him out again yeah he's due to be fighting end of August in America just still looking for an opponent. It's just just looking for someone who <laughs> wants to fight him. Um, we've been through the whole IBF rankings, all 15, and not a single one of them has accepted it. So, yeah, not, at the moment we're not sure who he's going to fight, but he's scheduled to fight end of August. So, okay, yeah, brilliant stuff. Thank you so much for taking the time yeah, to talk very much, October Red Boxing today. Um, brilliant to speak to you. It's nice to see what goes on behind the scenes. If we want to follow you or your social media, anything like that, how can we follow yourself? I'm on Twitter. Uh, if you search Tom Dallas, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'll not be, the heavyweight. Not the heavyweight. <laughs> not the old heavyweight, Joe. Even. Thank you so much for your time, and hopefully, we'll get to speak to you soon. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Hi, and thank you for watching October Red Boxing. Like, subscribe, and tap the bell for notifications. You can also find us on Instagram at October Red Boxing and on Twitter, 
October Red UK. And remember, at October Red, we stay ready.